Hi everyone, we're back. Today's Friday, August 28th. I'm Sean Duhimmel from the Mass Retirees Association. We have taken a short hiatus over the past couple of weeks from, from bringing new content through these videos. But again, we're back. We have a lot of great content to bring to you over the coming weeks and throughout the fall. So please tune in every Friday, look to your email box, look on Facebook, look on YouTube, look on the MassRetirees.com website. Um, we're going to be posting these every single Friday going forward with a lot of new content. But thank you so much for tuning in. I can't tell you how much I and everyone at Mass Retirees appreciates the support that we get from all of our members. And if you're not yet a member of Mass Retirees, please consider joining with us, particularly if you are learning something or getting some value out of these weekly updates. Be a part of the Mass Retirees Association. Our true strength is our membership. And the more members we have, the more um, we can do for all of you collectively. That's what this is all about. But this week, I want to focus on the Massachusetts primary election. It's coming up on Tuesday, September 1st. Now, some of you know that a few weeks ago, we conducted a poll or a survey of our members, and we found that 70% of you plan to vote by mail. And the reason for all that is pretty simple. COVID-19 and the safety precautions that need to be taken and just the comfort level of going into a public space like a polling location, if there is a way that you can do it more safely and securely from the comfort and the safety of your own home, again, 70% of our members are saying that that's what you would prefer to do. But whether you vote by mail, whether you have participated in early voting here in Massachusetts over the past week, which early voting ends today, as a matter of fact. So if you do plan on voting early by going to a polling location in your community, today's the last day you can do it this Friday. Beyond that, you can still vote on election day itself. On Tuesday, the polls here in Massachusetts are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Once the polls are closed, all of the ballots that have been cast, whether they be absentee ballots, whether they be early voting ballots, whether they be mail-in ballots or traditional ballots at the polling location on election day, all of those results will be tallied up together after the polls close on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Now, if you haven't already voted, I cannot stress to you enough the need and the urgency for you to get out and go and vote. Make a plan to vote. If you have um, a need or need some help getting to the polls, there's a lot of uh, ways you can go about doing that from having friends or family take you to a neighbor, to calling your local state rep or state senator, whomever you're supporting that's on the ballot, believe me, they're gonna find a way to get you to the polls because they want your vote and they need your vote. Now, why is this so important to us? Beyond the obvious that this is part of our democratic duty to vote, and it's our basic, basic freedom that we have in this country is the right to vote. Beyond all of that is the fact that your retirement benefits, your retirement security, the peace of mind that you have in retirement, all of that comes through the political process. Now, granted, there are laws and rules that we have helped put in place over the decades that protect you and protect your benefits. But we need to make sure that the folks who are elected to represent you are people who truly have your best interest at heart. Now, all of us have a million different things that are important to us and that we're interested in and different issues that are more important than others in terms of what, makes, what helps us make up our minds when we vote. And that's part of our personal um, rights as Americans to vote however, whichever way we want. But when it comes to public retirement, we support elected officials in candidates for public office who either have a record of supporting retirees, who have made it public that they support the issues that are most important to public retirees, such as defined benefit pensions, retiree health insurance, um, at the federal level, Social Security and Medicare and WEP and GPO reform, all the things that we talk about in our newsletter all the time. Those are the folks that we want to make sure get elected to represent you. That's our mission. That's all we're focused on here at Mass Retirees is electing people, regardless of what their party affiliation might be, um, to elected office. And beyond that, we want to make sure that the people who say that they're going to support you actually follow through and make our members a priority. 
one of the reasons why, or the key reason why, Mass Retirees was created in the first place, all the way back in 1968, was the sheer fact to make sure that public retirees are not forgotten, that you always have a voice, that you always have a seat at the table, and despite the fact that you are retired, you still matter. And that's our key function here, is to make sure that you're not forgotten, and that our elected officials make sure that you remain a personal priority. So all of the folks that are in our current September newsletter that we have endorsed, those are all people that we have worked with, we have hands-on experience of, of seeing them in action, and action always speaks louder than words. And we wanna make sure that those folks continue to have the ability to work with us. Now, one of the questions that we have had over the past couple of weeks since the newsletter came out is, you know, why are these folks all Democrats? Well, right now, we're focused on the primary election. And in the primary election, the Democrats who are in our newsletter, all of them have primary opponents. And not just any primary opponent, but active opponents who are making this a race and giving them a run for their money. In some cases, some of these races are pretty tight. And we wanna make sure that, again, people who support you, who have a record of supporting you, get reelected and we have the opportunity to continue to work with them. So out of all of the folks that we have endorsed, there's one election that I wanna spend just a couple of minutes talking about, and that's what's happening out in Western Mass. The first congressional district, Congressman Richard Neal, is up for reelection. Congressman Neal is no stranger to us or to you, I hope. Um, he's the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee down in Washington, D.C. Most importantly, Richie Neal is the key person in our government out of any elected official when it comes to our efforts to reform the windfall elimination provision and ultimately the government pension offset, the weapon, the GPO. The only reason why we're even close to being able to resolve these issues is because of Richie Neal and the work that he continues to do. He is an example of somebody who puts you first, somebody who makes sure that our members, public retirees, are a priority. And the legislation that he has pending before the House of Representatives right now, H.R. 4540, if that passes, that would represent a tremendous step forward in providing relief for current retirees and ending the nightmare of the windfall elimination provision for a future generation of retirees. And I have to be honest with you, if we lose Richie Neal in Congress, it's going to represent a huge, tremendous step backwards for our association and for you. So if you're a voter in the first congressional district, or you know someone who lives in the first congressional district and is a voter, urge them to please vote and please support Richie Neal. Supporting a newcomer, that might be attractive to some people. And some people, again, are voting on particular issues. But losing the chairman of Ways and Means, who is the key reason why the WEP and the GPO are not forgotten issues, issues at the national level, would be devastating to, to this association. On a personal note, I have spent the last 26 years working for you and being your point person when it comes to federal issues. I have worked hand in hand with Richie Neal for over <clears throat> 20 of those years. I've witnessed firsthand, been in the room with him, been seated at the table with him. I know the commitment that he has put into representing you and trying to get this done on your behalf. Now, some of you may question, well, why hasn't this happened already? You know, it's just broken promises one year after the other. Listen, if this was easy to fix, it would have been done decades ago. It's not easy to fix. We have an uphill battle to climb. Not everybody across the country wants to fix this, or at least, the ones, at least wants to fix it the same way. We need to make sure that Richie Neal is reelected to the House of Representatives and is there for us to continue working with him and resolve these issues on your behalf. So with that, again, please remember to vote, regardless of whom you choose to support, and that's up to you at the end of the day, at the very least, turn out, cast your ballot, make sure that your voice is heard. Now, I'm gonna be back to you again next Friday. We're gonna talk about the state budget. We're gonna talk about the COLA, healthcare. There's a whole bunch of things that will begin to be rolled out over the course of the fall um, once the, the budget process gets back underway and, and we have a better handle on what's happening in terms of the pandemic and the economy. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of work to do and a lot of news to report, but thank you again for tuning in this week. And again, if you're not yet a Mass Reti Retirees member, join our association, be part of this organization, and help us 
do the work for you. But again, thank you so very, very much.